Don't forget to like and subscribe, and share your opinion down below. Our stories today are from the subreddit r slash am I the a hole. Check the description for the links and timestamps. Am I the a hole for wiping hand sanitizer onto my hair after someone touched it flirtatiously? I went out with this guy, and knew the instant I saw him that I did not find him attractive whatsoever, and was not going to. His pictures weren't really misleading per se, but they also didn't really show his appearance very effectively either. I am a very awkward person with Asperger's and didn't know what to do, so I politely sat through the date. He repeatedly brought up how beautiful he found my hair. I have red hair and certain people fetishize it which I hate. I didn't know he was that into my hair until we were on the date. I tried to change the subject to neutral things. Anyway after a polite amount of time I said I had to go, and he insisted on walking me to my car. I opened my car door between us, so that in case he tried to have some physical goodbye, there would be a barrier. I said goodbye to him while standing on the other side of my car door and started to get into my car. He then reached his hand across my door and put it on my head and stroked my hair. I was filled with discomfort and am something of a germaphobe. I keep liquid hand sanitizer in my car door, so I squirted it into my hand and rubbed it on my hair, then drove off. He texted me and said I was very rude, and I deleted his contact. What I want to know is, was I rude to use the hand sanitizer? It was just my natural reaction, I hated the feeling of his germy hand on my hair. Not the a-hole sanitizing your hair is hilarious though. That was the perfect response to show him that you did not appreciate that. Not the a-hole. You are my hero. He was a jerk. He invaded your personal space, he's lucky he didn't get hand sanitizer in his eyes. Not the a-hole, was he on a date with your hair instead of you or something? OP you're absolutely not the a-hole. The comments are hilarious, but are right. You've given him signs of your disinterest to begin with, and tried to change the topic when he talked about your hair, which he should have taken a hint from already, and even had a barrier between you two when you stood by the car. He ignored it all and decided it's appropriate to straight up touch your hair when you've just met. Then labeled you rude. The nerve of this man that's Suru unacceptable. He's definitely the a-hole in your story. Am I the a-hole for not looking after a kid anymore? I, 27M, used to live in a crappy apartment building. I had a neighbor right next to me called Sarah, a prox 24F, who had a 6 year old son Mark. I had lived there for 3 years and moved out about 2 months ago. My grandfather passed away and left most of his money possessions to me and my sisters, it wasn't much after taxes but I was able to use it as a deposit on an apartment. Sarah and her son moved in about 4-5 months after I did and although she didn't talk about it, I got the feeling that her ex hadn't been the greatest. Police would come round occasionally to check she was okay, the kid was scared stiff of loud noises and yelling, etc. Dot. I work from home, data analyst, so was around a lot. Mark used to go to a preschool while she worked and then after he started school he was supposed to go to an after school child minding thing. Sarah works 10am to 8pm as a nurse aide. Problem is that back in March of last year his after school thing closed and then a couple months later his school shifted all their learning online while his mum only got busier because of the virus. I kept seeing him playing outside by the road or hanging off the balcony and was a bit worried for his safety so started offering him hot chocolate and keeping an eye on him. About a week later Sarah came by and offered me $20. She was very apologetic and explained that her parents disowned her and she couldn't afford a full time nanny for him but also couldn't afford to quit her job to keep an eye on him which was basically her only other option. My older sister is a nurse and I'd seen her looking shattered and with bruises on her face from her masks, so I felt really bad for them and offered to keep an eye on Mark while she worked since I was at home anyway and he's a cool kid. Long story short I told Sarah in October I was moving out and she was distraught about what she'd do with Mark, schools and childcare still hadn't reopened here yet. I offered for her to drop him off at my new place while she was working as a temporary solution during the virus. 
This had been working for the last couple of months until I received a letter from a lawyer basically informing me that Sarah was filing for child support against me as I had taken on a paternal figure in Mark's life. I immediately called Sarah and told her to come get Mark. We had a massive fight because basically she thinks I can afford it so why shouldn't I pay it? After she picked him up, I blocked her number and contacted a lawyer who told me that I would probably be fine as I am not his dad and I never offered to take care of him in any financial way. Sarah has been in touch with my sisters who think that I'm doing the right thing not paying but I'm being a D by refusing to look after Mark anymore. I feel like crap since he's probably back to being stuck in those crappy apartment blocks again but I also don't want to risk a court case. Am I the a-hole for refusing to look after him while she works? Not the a-hole. You were being nice and Sarah decided to take even more advantage of you than she already was. The audacity of this lady. I seriously cannot even believe it. My jaw dropped reading this. I'm sorry you and Mark are dealing with this. Not the a-hole and you did the right thing. You did a lot for her and she decided to abuse your friendship. You have to protect yourself and if you continue to look after Mark, it would be a tacit agreement to her demands of a lawsuit and would no doubt work against you. Not the a-hole. What on earth is wrong with your sisters? You are most certainly not an a-hole for refusing to watch Sarah's child again. Call me crazy, but I don't think filing a frivolous lawsuit for support because you can afford it is any way to repay a kindness. If Sarah has trouble finding alternate arrangements for Mark, she has only herself to blame. Oh my god, OP, surely you're not the a-hole. You've been doing her a huge favor by looking after Mark when she couldn't, yet she tried to take further advantage of you just because she thinks you can afford it. She's way out of line, and you haven't been raising her son only watching him while she worked. She basically bit the hand that fed her then complained about it. You've done well to contact a lawyer and to refuse looking after him anymore. The further you're away from them the better, really. Am I the a-hole for not wanting my daughter to change her name? For one reason or another, my daughter, now 14 going on 15 has always hated her name, Luciana Emma, obviously not her actual name for privacy reasons, but close enough nevertheless. My wife and I thought long and hard about her name before she was born. We wanted it to be something truly meaningful, not just a name we chose simply because we thought it sounded nice. We eventually settled on Luciana as a first name, meant as a way to honor to my now deceased aunt who meant the world to me as a kid and who raised me as her own after my mother decided she couldn't be bothered to. I loved and still love everything about that name because it reminds me of her, so I always hoped my daughter would grow to love it just as much. The middle name Emma has a very similar story behind it, my wife chose it as a tribute to one of her own relatives that passed away. Unfortunately, as you all might have already guessed, my daughter doesn't at all share my opinions on this. I never understood why. Even as a kid, she'd always complain about how she hated her name and wanted nothing to do with it. One day, when she was around 6, she came back from school suddenly declaring that her new name was Ingrid. Again, not the actual name she chose but close enough. At the time I just laughed it off as another one of those weird phases kids go through, but the name Ingrid really stuck with her for some reason and before I knew it, everyone around us was calling her that. That's pretty much how it's been ever since. Everyone from classmates and friends to teachers and neighbors, they all know her as Ingrid. She's Luciana Emma only when she's writing her name on legal documents but never anywhere else. And believe me, I've tried coaxing her into using her very beautiful real name. Tried coming up for nicknames for her to use, like Lucy, M, Lucia or Anna. Tried telling her the stories behind the names me and her mother chose for her. But nothing ever worked, and I still fail to understand this irrational hatred she has for her birth name. Now her 15th birthday is coming up and she asked us to let her legally change her name to Ingrid as a present. It was a hard no from me but a yes from my wife, who says she doesn't see the harm in a given the fact that our daughter's been going by Ingrid for nearly a decade now. And while I do see her point, I think it's such a stupid thing to do. She has such a beautiful and meaningful name and wants to change it to some random one she picked as a kid simply because she likes it more. 
Moreover, I don't think she's old enough to make a decision like this so I told her to wait a few more years, which sparked a pretty big fight between me, her and her mother. Am I the a-hole? You are the a-hole. This isn't some passing fancy, she's held on to this name for nearly 9 years now. She's got everyone else saying it, too. Perhaps you could pick up two sets of name change documents, so that when she changes her name to Ingrid, you can change yours to Luciana Emma. If the names mean that much to you, you should use them, but trying to force them on your daughter is not the solution. It's controlling. She's a human being, not property. You are the a-hole, but to put it more broadly, just because you're in charge of a child's well-being, doesn't mean you have a right to her life's important choices. While you might be able to legally bar her now from changing her name, you obviously haven't stopped her from changing it for all intents and important purposes. Similarly, in the future you cannot dictate who she dates or what she does for a living or if she adopts a pet or if she has kids or what religion she'll choose or who she'll vote for. You can certainly try, but I can tell you from experience she'll just push you away and you'll lose her. If she turns out to be trans or non-binary, you also won't be able to decide her gender or pronouns. She's a person, and if you choose to hurt her, which you are doing here, she can choose to not be around you. OP you're definitely the a-hole here. You have no right to force her to like a name and use it all her life just because you like it. It's her life, not yours, and her choice, not yours. Instead of supporting her choices and encouraging her to decide for her own, which she's already done by getting everyone to call her Ingrid, whether you liked it or not, and which you seem to complain here about, you're trying to prove you're right regardless, even when her mom has sided with her on it, too. You have no right to decide for her if it's a rational hatred, or if she has reasons for it. She might have opted not to tell you why she hated it. She's not being irrational for this. She actually sounds strong-willed and decisive which is admirable. Kudos to her for that. You on the other hand sound irrational for this controlling behavior. You're dismissing her feelings toward the name, just to validate yours. None of it is okay. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the story as much as I did. Until next time.